Well, y'all, we're getting ready to cook dinner, and I thought I'd bring you with me. I'm cooking, uh, I've only got three little bitty eggplants here, so that would be equal to a small eggplant, I would assume. And that's what we're gonna be using. First off, I gotta cut my potatoes because I've gotta pre-cook my potatoes. Let me find a knife. Y'all know I'm never prepared. <laughs> I'm never prepared. <laughs> But I'm, I'm prepared as I can be, put it that way. Because we're going to do this the, the quick way. I'm just going to dice up my potatoes. And I'm going to cook them real quick in the microwave. going to dice them up. And usually I don't add carrots to this, but I'm going to add a few carrots in here. Some people call this uh, eggplant stew. Some people call it eggplant curry. I don't know. <laughs> Call it whatever you want, I guess. Just try to get all your pieces about equal size so they'll cook evenly. put it in this oven safe bowl now I've got a little bit of carrots here about a handful and I'm just gonna slice those up a little bit so they're about the same size as my potatoes I just threw one in the floor, y'all. Oh well, it can stay there. I'll find it later. And I have already washed my carrots to save time. I'm going to bring these over to the sink and rinse them a little. And I've got about a half a cup of water, I think, in the bottom. Let's see. Yeah, you don't need much, but you do need a little bit of water, about a half a cup. In the bottom, you need a oven microwave-proof lid, and we're going to put them in the microwave for about five minutes to begin with on high. And while that's, oop, I forgot a potato right there. Got to get the other potato in there. Y'all should have told me I left a potato. What's wrong with y'all? 
You should have told me I left a potato out. I thought I had all of them. But you're supposed to use one medium um, eggplant, or you can use a large eggplant. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what your stores have or what you grow in your garden. I've already picked most of mine already, so I only had those three left out there to be able to pick them to cook this. I'm going to put it in there for 10 minutes. Whoop. Time cook. Ten minutes, because I think with that many carrots and potatoes, it's going to take that much. So, now what I'm going to do, I've got an onion. Just take one whole onion, and I cut mine up in quarters already. But you need to chop up one onion. Doesn't matter how you chop it, any way you want to. You can dice it up, you can slice it up, however you want. about a medium sized onion. It's not a great big one. But the good thing about this dish is you can put as much onion as you want. You can put a little bit. You can put a big old large onion in there. It doesn't matter. It's up to you because it's your dish. <coughs> I'm going to turn my skillet on. And you can do this in a, a, a regular frying pan or wok or whatever you want to fix it in. For the video, I decided I would do it over here on the table so you can basically see what I'm doing. I'm going to throw all that right in there. start working on my eggplant. Take them over here and wash them off a little bit. We're going to dice it up. If you want to take the skin off of yours, you can. It's up to you, but you don't have to. The recipe does not call to cook, take the uh, skin off of your eggplant. It's just totally up to you. And I'm throwing my eggplant right in with my onions. I know sometimes if your eggplant is very big, the skin doesn't get cooked tender. So it's up to you if you peel it or not. 
Mine is so little, I just didn't want to have to peel most of it away to peel it. I want to turn that down a little bit. I don't want it to burn. Okay, what did I do with my spatula? hiding from me but you do have to keep it kind of stirred while it's sauteing because you don't want your onions or any of that stuff to burn on you the ideal thing is to have all your veggies cut up before you do this but I was crunch for time <laughs> so So I think these three little eggplants will be equal to my carrots and my potatoes that I'm putting in there. When I do stuff like this, I try to put equal amounts of each thing when it comes to potatoes and carrots or, in this case, eggplant. Also, I'm going to put about six cloves of this garlic in there. It's a fresh garlic. And you know how that goes. It all sticks to your fingers. Because this is a small garlic. I may even put more than six in there since it is a small one. Cut the end off of your garlic and then just squish it and that peeling will come right off of it for you. Turn that on a little bit more. I want to put just a little bit more olive oil in there. I either use grapeseed oil or olive oil, whichever one I find is the most reasonably priced when I go to buy it. <laughs> but this is a tiny garlic, so I may end up putting the whole thing in there. If it was a bigger one, I wouldn't, but. And it's squished up pretty good, so I'm not gonna bother to try to cut it. Because uh, it, it, it'll cook up to pieces anyway. You know, garlic, when it's cooked right, will turn to almost mush. So I don't think there's a whole big need of chopping it, really. Not in this dish, anyway.
Now those two are a little bit bigger, so I may chop them. You just love it when all that garlic skin sticks to your fingers. <laughs> it sticks to you like glue. I hate it when it does that. Like I said, cut the ends of it off where it was on to the bulb. And then when you squish it or tap it with your knife. Whoops, not supposed to fly off the cutting board. Yeah, the, this garlic was so tiny that I'm just using the whole thing. And that was fresh garlic out of my garden, y'all. That's the reason it didn't get too big, I guess. <laughs> because of the heat in this Texas, it, it stunts everything's growth in the garden. Plus the water rationing. I'm going to go ahead and just chop those a little bit. They're a little bit bigger. y'all but I never did eat eggplant growing up I don't know if maybe my mom or my family didn't like eggplant but I don't remember anybody in our neighborhood that ever ate eggplant or even grew it in the garden for that matter isn't that odd get some of this up out of my way Here, I'll just put it in this bag where I got my tater peelings and my scraps from my other veggies. And I think the microwave turned off, so we need to check our taters and our carrots. Get my mittens are right behind me, y'all. <laughs> Check these taters and carrots and see if they've cooked. Because we don't want to put our taters and our carrots in this dish until they're cooked. Yeah, they're done enough. So I'm just going to leave those to the side. right here while I work on this. <laughs> Turn it up just a little bit more. Now we're going to put a little bit of thyme. If you've got thyme leaves, that's fine. Fresh thyme is good. I just have the dehydrated one. Put about a teaspoon of that in there. I'm going to put about a teaspoon of um, smoked paprika. There you go. And I'm going to put about a spoonful, teaspoonful of curry, curry powder. And you know what? I am going to use this this time. I'm not really particularly crazy about curry, but 
And I'm going to put some salt. And I've got Himalayan salt here. about a half a teaspoon. And I know y'all, most people stop the camera to do all this little bit of a cleanup, but I don't want to stop my camera because <laughs> then people think I'm leaving stuff out on purpose that I don't want you to see. And I want you to see everything that I do. It did boil over a little bit in my microwave. That's no problem. All you've got to do is bring out your dish rag and get over there and wipe out your microwave. <laughs> Plain and simple. Because anytime you cook anything with liquid or in your microwave any length of time like that, it's going to get steamy in there. And I like to go ahead and clean mine rather than leave it all wet. You know, I couldn't believe it. I stopped by Aldi to get these canned of tomatoes. And I wasn't planning on going to Aldi's. But I was out that way anyway because I had to go to Walgreens to pick up my blood pressure prescription. Because they had contacted me and said it was ready to be picked. Or said that I needed to refill it. So I went ahead and refilled it. And I went into Aldi's to pick up some diced tomatoes. I picked up some uh, grapeseed oil. I picked up two cans of tomatoes. I decided I'd get two cans so in case I needed them, I'd have them. I picked up a dozen eggs. Now, we're just going to dump that right in there. some of this stuff out of the way. I don't like my people looking at all my garbage while I'm cooking. So put your tomatoes in there. I got my stuff falling in the floor over here, y'all. I can't believe it. Can't win for losing, can I? We'll just put that bag right there. <laughs> Keep it out of the way. That's better than having it in the floor. Y'all, I've had acorns falling for days. It's hard to imagine it's that time of year already that I've got acorns falling. Sounds like kids 
throwing marbles at the house. Now I'm going to add my uh, potatoes and my carrots, dump them right in there. Right potato right there. Now you can make a pot of rice and serve this on rice or eat it just like it is, it's up to you. I gotta get a spoon and do a little taste test to make sure I got enough spices in there. People just love to eat this on, on rice. Other people would just eat it just like it is, with maybe a, a tortilla, to your bread, or you can eat any kind of bread. You can toast you some garlic bread, anything you want to go with this. But see, your carrots and your potatoes are already cooked. So what you want to do is just to heat them, reheat them up in your eggplant and your tomato sauce and all that. And let them absorb some of that, that uh, sauce in the potatoes. make the uh, rice to go with it tomorrow. I just wanted to go ahead and get this prepared for the video. I just, I really worried that wasn't going to eat it tonight, but hey, that looks good to me. Y'all take a bite. Open wide. Take a bite, y'all. It's good. Dear Lord, bless this food I'm about to eat. Amen. Mmm. Mmm. That is so good. I had somebody, forgive me for being out of the, out of the camera, but I'm getting caught. And we're going to let our curry 
kind of simmer. It's going to simmer real slow with the lid on it. And I'm going to put on a pot of rice. There was a lady that asked me, just cook a plain old pot of rice. How do you cook rice that it don't get sticky? Well, we're about to find out, I guess. I think I've got some already open. <laughs> Everything's going to jump out at me. And I should have put this on before. But I didn't, and I apologize. Where's my, there's my measuring cup. We're going to let our curry simmer over there and finish cooking a little bit. And that's, believe it or not, that's full of protein when you got eggplant in there. I'm going to put it in the pot. I'm going to get it over here. I'm going to wash my rice. You know what? I didn't turn my other light on over here. And it's getting a bit dark over in this corner. <laughs> I'm going to wash my rice a little bit. I'm going to wash it two times, rinse it off, and then drain the water off. There's my drain, my rinsed rice, one cup of rice. I'm going to turn the burner on while I get the other cup. You put two cups of water. And we're just going to cook it now. Bring it to a bowl. Pay attention to my curry. I don't want it burning. You want it to cook just for just a little bit. Guess I can leave that there. But it, it only takes about 15 minutes for your rice to cook. You got one cup of rice rinsed twice before I put it in there to cook it. And then I added two cups of water. I'm going to bring it to a boil and then I'm going to put the lid on it and turn it down. But I tell you what, th this is good y'all. This is good. Usually I don't like curry and stuff, but this only had one teaspoon of curry, curry powder, and it's really good. Mmm, yep. That is good, y'all. 
And I shouldn't be eating it till I get my rice done. Mmm. Does need to stay in there and cook just a tiny bit more though. You ever notice how most videos fade away, they turn it off, they pause it, and then they do this. They do all this cleanup. And then they turn the camera back on. <laughs> the only thing I wonder with all that is what are we not seeing? <laughs> what are they doing? that we don't see, you know? And there's my carrot that's in the floor. Pick it up and put it in this garbage bag so I can take it out to the compost bin in a few. I think it does need just a little bit more olive oil in it. Olive oil is good for you. It's got enough salt. Yeah, I picked this up at um, Marshall's one day when I was in there. And I said, I think I'm going to try this Himalayan salt and just see. You know, it, it's great putting on uh, pretzels and things you want big grain salt on. It's great for that. But it is good salt. <laughs> well, see where I got this little jewel from. Not there. Got so many spices. It's unreal. So many. Let's put this boat pack breaker down here. Well, it's not going to go down there. I'll go right there, maybe. And that's a little carousel of <laughs> spices, and I've got spices all over the cabinet up there, so. You tell me, do I cook with spices or do I not cook with spices? And that's starting to boil. Whew. It's starting to boil, so now I'm going to turn it down on low, on the low heat, and leave it for 15 minutes. And I guess I'll see you back in about 15 minutes. Well, we're back, y'all. I've cooked my rice for about 15 minutes, and then I turn the burner off and I'll let it set for five minutes. And that's so the rice can absorb all of the moisture. So I don't have watery rice. I don't like watery rice. I'm going to get me a plate here. Because I am fixing to eat my dinner right along with everybody else.
take the lid off of my pot, which is hot. But I've let it set for five minutes after it boiled for 15 minutes, or I, I brought it to a good rolling boil, turned it down on low, put a lid on it, and left it cook for 15 minutes. And then I, I just completely turned the burner off. And you can see how perfect my rice comes out. We're going to come over here and get some of our eggplant curry or eggplant stew as you call it. <laughs> I'm going to put it right on my rice just like that. I wanted it to look pretty y'all. Let me get, let you get a close-up of it. Don't that look good? Eggplant curry or eggplant stew. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to dig in. But this is my dinner. But while it's cooling just a tiny bit, because that rice and that, that eggplant curry is hot. I wanted to tell you a little bit of something about eggplant and the dish that I just cooked. It says it should be noted that British, English, and many other language eggplants are called aubergines or similar. Australians and American English use eggplant through aubergine to see is seeing increased use in Australia. Eggplants come from the French word, well, eggplant. And did you know, I found out something. If you get a male eggplant, it's not bitter. But if you get a female eggplant and it's full of seeds, your seeds are what's bitter. If you can take your seeds out, before you cook it and get rid of the seeds, your eggplant flesh will not be bitter. But I wondered, how, how do you tell a male eggplant from a female eggplant? Oh. It shows you right here. Here's the picture of differences in male and female eggplants. As you can see, male is closer to a circular, is more shallow, shallow, and female is elongated and deeper. And I'll show you the picture of it. So the male, the end of it is kind of rounded, where the female it's kind of on, on, like, you know, elongated. It's not perfectly round. You can see that up there, right there. It's kind of long. Where the male is round. And that's just the end of the eggplant. And you know, I never knew that, y'all. I never knew that. And they say you can uh, put salt on your eggplant let it sit in a bowl for about 30 minutes, then rinse your eggplant off, and then it's not going to be bitter. I've done that, and it still comes out with a bitter taste. So I think the next time I cook eggplant, I'm going to notice the end of my eggplant and see if it's round, if it's female, or see if it's, wait a minute, <laughs> am I getting it backwards? The male is rounded. The female is the one that's elongated. So if you look at the end, not the end where it came off the plant with the cap on it, but the other end, if you see whether it's round or elongated, the elongated is the female 
the round one is the male. Okay, now get back up here and see where I read that. Okay, it's the female that is bitter. The male is not bitter. So if you get the female with the elongated end on it, you may want to take the seeds out of it so it's not bitter. The male one that has the rounded end, you probably don't have to worry about it. But, but I thought that was very interesting to learn that about eggplant. So, dear Lord, bless this food I'm about to eat. Amen. Bless everybody in YouTube land. So, there we go, y'all. I got my rice and I got my eggplant curry. Y'all join me. Try the recipe. I think you'll love it. Because I'm, I'm, for one, never really liked curry. But I love this recipe. I really do. Mmm. This is really good. And you might say, well, why'd you put uh, potatoes and carrots if you're just going to dump it on a bed of rice? Well, like I said, you can eat it by itself or you can put it on a bed of rice. I chose to put it on some rice. Or, let's see if I can find one. You can fix um, toast with it, rolls, whatever you want. Or in some countries, <laughs> you can just take one of these. A tortilla. And that's just a flat bread. Get some of it in your tortilla and eat it like that. Just like that, y'all. Just like you would a taco or something. Mmm. It's pretty good either way. I like it with the tortilla shell. So if you don't have fancy rolls, but you got some tortilla shells... Scoop some right up in your shell and eat it. That's your bread. Mmm. That's good. That is real good. In fact, I think I like it better in the tortilla shell. But I like my rice, too. Y'all take a bite of that in the tortilla shell. So if you wonder what you're going to do with bread, just get you a package of tortillas and put them out on the table and let everybody eat them with it. Mmm. That is good, y'all. I think I found most curries are too spicy. They have too much of something in them. But I really like this one. This is really good. And with that, I'm going to let y'all go. 
I'm going to sit down here and finish my dinner. <laughs> but please, try this recipe. I think you'll like it. In fact, I think you'll love it. So, we'll see you on the next one. Love y'all. Bye now.